Um, OK, so what I'm going to talk to you today about is these uh, higher tangential structures um, related to well, orientations, uh, spin bundles. Um, so I'm going to start out uh, with what's called the Whitehead Tower. So I'll just set the scene and tell you which structures I care about. Um, that will give you a little bit of motivation to tell you why we care about the certain structures that we're looking at. Um, and then I'm going to go into rational homotopy. So that's really what I was doing to attack this problem. Um, so when you look at the Whitehead Tower, the, the homotopy is actually very nice. But as you go up this tower that I'll describe in a second, you add in a lot of torsion. And in cohomology, that becomes very nasty to deal with. Um, but we still want to look at the cohomology. But if you deal with it rationally, it becomes much nicer. Um, and then after that, I'll talk about the applications. Uh, and that'll be that. OK, so uh, the Whitehead Tower, uh, it's going to be a sequence of spaces. Um, so you have your, it's related to a space x. Your x is going to be at the base. And then you have the sequence where at each step uh, you have a vibration. Um, and the kth space is going to be k minus 1 connected. Uh, and because you have vibrations between each of these spaces, you have isomorphisms on the higher homotopy groups. Uh, so some examples, some easy ones. Uh, if we take, say, KGN, so an eilenberg mclean space, uh, you just get, well, uh, the point over KGN. Um, this is going to be, well, so it's very trivial because, uh, you know, yeah, there's only one homotopy group. Now, if I'm following this definition, I'd have a, a sequence of n of these, but all the maps between them would be equality. That would be inter wouldn't be interesting, so I won't include those. Um, you can also look at the tower over the, the rational two-sphere, uh, right? And this, so you have non-trivial uh, rational cohomology for degrees two and three. So at the bottom, you have the two-sphere. Then you kill the second homotopy group, and you're left with just an eilenberg mclean space, degree three. Uh, so just briefly how you would construct this. Uh, so you do this inductively, and at the end step, you've got an n minus 1 connected space. Horavitz gives you this isomorphism between the nth homotopy group uh, and the nth cohomology group. And you choose a, represent a representative using Brown representation theory uh, to give you a map. And then you can just define uh, the next space in this sequence as the homotopy pullback of this, or the homotopy fiber of this map. OK, so what we care about, well, we're going to care about this Whitehead Tower sitting over BSO. Um, so BSO, the classifying space for SO. Um, and we know, well, bot periodicity tells us that these are our homotopy groups. Um, since SO is homotopically just the looping of the classifying space, and we know the, the homotopy groups for BSO, and therefore all the spaces above this. Uh, so we know that. Well, the second Stiefel-Whitney class is the obstruction to go to BSO4. Then you have a fraction of the first Pontryagin class for the next step, a fraction of the second Pontryagin uh, class for the step after that. Um, and we call these, well, instead, BSO, B-spin, string, B-5-brain, right? So these refer to these higher structures. So uh, B-spin and BSO, pretty well known. Um, strings, really well known. Five-brain, maybe not as much. Uh, but we can continue this tower onwards and onwards and onwards. Um, so just, you know, remind, I, SO I probably don't need to tell you much about. Um, spin, the double cover of SON. Um, string, if you don't know what that is, uh, well, it was first introduced by Stefan Stoltz. Uh, it's the six connected cover of uh, the spin group. Um, and uh, five brain, this was introduced by Hisham, Erz, and Jim Stashif, uh, is then going to be the second seven connected cover over uh, string. Um, so I'm going to be talking about liftings of the structure group. Um, so if I have some bundle, so in general, um, uh, if I have an ONK bundle, um, P over M, then I'm going to say that a lifting of this structure group uh, is just a lifting along the Whitehead Tower. Uh, so for K equals 4, this is going to be sh our string structures. For K equals 8, 5-brain structures, and 12, something called 9-brain structures, which will come up. Um, so I'll put that in there now. 
uh, though those are even less well known. Um, uh, so I'm going to give you some motivation here. Uh, I think Faye did a much better job than, than I'll probably do here, but I'll, I'll, I'll try a little bit anyways. Um, so uh, originally, killing back uh, developed these ideas of string structures by looking at the loop space, uh, the loop bundle, um, and putting a spin structure on the loop bundle. Um, Stoltz Teichner, uh, well, they were looking at this. Uh, well, Stoltz, obviously, he came up with uh, the string group, um, but they, they were considering string structures as trivializations of a Chern Simons theory. Um, uh, in one of Hisham's paper, uh, he was looking at the C field and was showing that the C field actually corresponds to a, a string structure in many cases. Um, for Hopkins, Hopkins shows that uh, string structure is necessary to define the Witten genus. Um, and Bunke uh, gives an explicit uh, way to trivialize the Fafian line bundle, uh, given that you've chosen a string structure. So five brain structures, a little bit different. So we've got a 10-dimensional spin manifold, um, possibly equipped with a, a gauge bundle. Um, we'll have uh, this H3 NS NS field um, coupled to the string, and then it's dual H7. Um, so the dual green shorts mechanism requires that uh, this differential right here vanishes. Uh, and Hisham, Erz, and Jim Stashev show in a paper that this is equivalent to, well, canceling 16P2. Okay, so now to the rational homotopy. So just briefly what this is, right? So I'm gonna call a space rational if every homotopy group is gonna be a rational vector space. Um, and we have this nice universal property, which namely says that if I have a space X, um, then a rationalization of X is going to be this map from X to XQ, um, such that every map factors through, every map to a rational space Y factors through this map L, and that L induces a, a, an isomorphism on homotopy groups once I've tensored with Q. Um, so a nice fact is that every one connected space admits a rationalization, um, and for us that's all we're, we're really going to need. Uh, so an example, so if you take an eilenberg mclean space, look at, uh, well it's cohomology, so for KZN, right, the, the, co the nth degree cohomology is Q. That gives you a, a map from KZN to KQN, uh, and that's its rationalization. Um, in general, it's pretty easy. Uh, usually you're just tensoring with Q. Um, so if we look at BSO, um, this is gonna be right here, I have the uh, stable limit of BSO. Um, then the homotopy groups are just, uh, well, we know they're, uh, Sorry, um, yeah, the homotopy groups are gonna be Q for degree 4K, um, and then it's rational cohomology uh, is just this ring here. Um, the rational four sphere, um, again, given that it's, when rationally we only have two non-trivial homotopy groups, we get that it's going to be equivalent rationally uh, to a product of eilenberg mclean spaces. <laughs> What's that? Um, yeah, so the way you, you use a telescoping series. Um, so if you want something, I mean, I, if you're looking for something very nice, um, no, you're eventually going to take a, a, a co-limit and the whole thing's going to be like, the, you, when you think of these spaces, Constructing them is going to the end space is going to be very messy. Um, a KQN, yeah, right. It's it's yeah. Okay, so uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to look at these groups rationally. Um, and nice things happen when they're rational. So, so yes, the space becomes, well, 
much much more like messy, I guess. It's not a you're not going to have a manifold. You're, you're not going to expect anything nice. But the homotopy properties, como cohomological properties, they're going to be much nicer. Um, so combining some uh, results from Lupton, Phillips, Chauchet, and Smith, and Vocal, um, uh, we proved this theorem that um, uh, these higher groups, string, five brain, nine brain, et cetera, rationally, um, are going to be abelian groups. Um, and the way you do this is you just look at, well, so a Vocal tells us that for you know, a Lie group G, uh, the Samuelson product vanishes. Um, and from Lopton, Phillips, Shachette, and Smith, you find that the vanishing of the Samuelson product is equivalent to being, for G being rationally homotopy abelian. Um, so the nice thing then is that, well, this is going to be equivalent to having a product of eilenberg mclean spaces. And so you now know that, well, in your Whitehead Tower, all of these guys look like products of white of eilenberg mclean spaces. So as you kill those homotopies, you're just eliminating the the eilenberg mclean spaces. So you still get products of eilenberg mclean spaces. Um, so the Samuelson product still vanishes, and so they stay uh, abelian. Uh, and this structure is unique up to uh, NH equivalents. Um, so another thing we did was we looked at uh, the gauge group using rational homotopy theory. Um, so right here's our gauge group, G equivariant homomorphisms of P. Uh, I also defined the pointed gauge group. Um, and right, uh, normally, uh, if we have a trivial bundle, um, then you've get, you get an isomorphism between the gauge group and maps from X to G. And similarly, if G is abelian. Okay, so I defined it twice, all right. Um, Felix Apria um, have this theorem that says that uh, for G a compact group and X having the homotopy type of CW complex, we have rational equivalences between, well, uh, the gauge group and these maps. And what we show is that, and it's not too hard to do, but for spin then we have this is true. Now if we start taking the homotopy fibers of um, spin. Uh, so if we take look at the whitehead over whitehead tower over spin, uh, this might not be as be true, but it turns out to hold, um, and it relies on the structure of the rational cohomology. Um, so we come up with this that uh, our gauge groups they're going to be products of these eilenberg mclean spaces or, or mapping spaces to the eilenberg mclean space, um, and I mean. You can kind of see how this would be true, right, because this will be related to the cohomology if you're using Brown representability theorem. Um, and you get some nice things. So you see bot periodicity. So you'll see that uh, the homotopy groups, uh, they'll be periodic for. OK, so our goal here was to look at this whitehead tower for our B string, B5 brain. Um, and so that's what we did. So we did repeat the whole story um, rationally, you know, just rationalize. Uh, some of the stuff goes away. So BSO really here, right, when you're looking at any, any cohomology classes that are torsion, that's gone. So this tower now just is multiples of four going up. Um, but you have that for each, each level here. There's actually going to be a map between well, the original classifying space to your rationalized classifying space. So basically here you could either start at BSO at the bottom, go up using the Whitehead Tower, or you could use the original Whitehead Tower and then rationalize it each step. It's going to be the same thing. OK, so we're calling these rational five brain, rational string. Um, so now we want to look at, well, uh, another ONK bundle, but we're going to look at its rational structure. So we can rationalize, so you take that map from M to BONK and you look at its extension to uh, the rational classifying space. So we'll call that a, a rational bundle and we'll look at lifts uh, along the Whitehead Tower. And so we'll call that a rational ONK plus one structure. Uh, so again, this lift exists if the composition here uh, is homotopically trivial. So I'll define a, a rational five-brain class. 
Um, this is going to be a degree seven cohomology class on the total space. Um, so P here will be a string bundle. Um, and it'll be required that this class uh, restricts to on the fibers to the transgression of the, the second Pontryagin class. Uh, so you've got the second Pontryagin class down here. Um, corresponding to your, your string bundle, uh, you've got a, the Serre spectral sequence. And from the Serre spectral sequence, you can get this nice exact sequence here. And you see that, well, having a, a class here that maps uh, to uh, along the fibers to uh, the transgression means that the composition here, that this has to be trivialized. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a uh, homotopy abelian group. No, 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 no. Definitely not Lee group. No. Um, and um, it's been a little while since since uh, my PhD. But uh, if you do if you do have a choice for a, an abelian group for your KZN, um, you can use that. And that will give you that that'll give you some kind of group structure if you had that. But oh, definitely not. Yeah, definitely not smooth. Yeah, this is this is very messy. You don't want to. I mean, yeah. There's no 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 smoothness here. Okay. So uh, right. So every five brain class. So we can define five brain classes the same way. That's usually done. Um, uh, if you define a five brain class in the same way when you rationalize, well, it'll correspond to a rational five brain class. Um, isomorphism classes of rational five brain structures are in one to one correspondence with rational five brain structures, um, of five brain classes. Sorry, so lifts from uh, B string to uh, B five brain um, up to isomorphism, uh, they're classified uh, by such classes. Um, and the set of all classes is a torsor for, uh, for degree seven cohomology, um, which you can see from this uh, sequence. Okay, so I'm gonna just define what I mean by an underlying spin bundle. Um, so if I have a bundle from uh, a string bundle, P over M, and I have its classifying map, uh, F here, um, I can compose it with the classifying, with the, the, uh, the D looping, whatever, the classifying map from B string to B spin, um, compose to get G, and that will define um, a spin bundle. Um, so I will call this the underlying spin bundle. Um, you can think of it as if you started with a spin bundle and you lifted, uh, this would have been your spin bundle. Um, so what we did, uh, well, starting with a string bundle, um, and looking at our underlying spin bundle, we notice that, well, we've got this map mu, we've got, it reduces to this homomorphism on the fibers. Uh, and this map row, or this map, yeah, this map row on the fibers for degree seven is gonna be an isomorphism. Uh, so remember that when I defined uh, rational five brain classes or um, rational string classes, any of these, what you're looking at is you're looking at something on the, the total space of the bundle, um, which maps onto the fibers, or when it's restricted to the fibers, to the transgression uh, of, of maybe P2 or, or whatever your obstruction class is. Um, so here what we do is we'll, we notice that there's this isomorphism. Um, so under this isomorphism, we pull back uh, the transgression onto spin. So we look at it on spin. And the idea here is then to just say, to define these five brain classes, not on the string bundle, but on the spin bundle. So it's not, not terribly you know, crazy to do that. Um, now, that exact sequence that I showed you, um, it's not quite the same now. Um, it's, 
it, it's not there's it's not going to be exact. It's not going to have that zero to H seven M Q, um, but we can still look at it. Uh, so we we define a rational spin five ring class as to just be um, some class on the total space of the spin bundle such that its restriction onto the fibers is S now. Uh, Okay, so what you'll find is that if any spin five-brain class under this map, kind of by construction, will be mapped to a five-brain class. Um, uh, it's not hard to show that this map is going to be surjective. Um, and uh, using spectral sequences, we have this theorem, which says that, well, any rational five-brain class is in the image, is the image of a spin five-brain class under this map, right, which is basically just the surjective property. Um, but we also measured the, the kernel. Um, so the difference between any spin five brain class that gets identified when we move, when we go to the the uh, string bundle is given to us by a product here where S is the string class. So it's a, an element in degree three cohomology um, of the, the spin bundle uh, times the pullback of some class in degree four cohomology. So the proof of this goes something along the lines where you look at um, the Sayre spectral or the uh, yeah the Sayre spectral sequence for um, B spin for B string um, and for your 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 spin bundle and your string bundle um, and you compare them and you see what happens to these maps. Um, okay, so now I'll talk so about some applications. I'm going pretty quickly here. Um, so we're going to work in an extended space time, uh, which in our case is going to be the spin bundle. Um, so many, there, there are many examples of this, especially in this talk. I tried to write down as many as that, that I could remember. I've probably missed a lot of them. Um, so I know that Eric and Jacques have a paper on fiber WZW models. Um, uh, we've got here T-duality in loop space, Peter, Faye, Matai. Um, we've heard about double exce and exceptional field theories, um, you know, David and Martin um, and Noriaki. Um, and there's also super gerbs uh, that uh, Hisham and Ur studies, along with many others. Uh, I think there was a loop group Meng Chuan had. Um, so we made an observation, so this is in our, our most recent paper, um, that, uh, well, so if you look at uh, the action, so take the NS5 brain, uh, extended on a seven-dimensional spin manifold, um, and then the action is given to you by uh, this here. So it's this integral of C3 wedge G4. So M5. This is where the, I don't quite know the physics as well. Um, okay, so an M5 brain. Um, and so the C3 field is the, so the C field um, can be identified with a string structure, right? So this is our deg three, uh, degree three class. Um, and so cohomologically, uh, we can consider this as just this pairing here um, between the cup product of C3 and G4 uh, with X, where X is the fundamental homology class. And so um, we're just going to interpret then that this uh, action functional here is just going to be the difference of two rational spin fibering structures on X7. But when you pull this back to the, the total bundle, it will be uh, closed. Uh, 
uh, right here. Uh, so this will be uh, uh, the cohomology class representing uh, C3. It's not closed, but so I probably should, let's see, I want to consider X7 as being extended now, not on, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the brain should be extended on the spin bundle over X7. So if I'm looking at it just on X7, then these aren't going to be closed. So C3 is going to be, uh, it's something like a, a sum of maybe H3 plus some churn simons terms in some cases. Um, and when you pull that back onto the spin bundle, uh, those classes become, those, they, they actually become a cohomology class. Um, and so then this pairing should be, it should, uh, well, it should be the extended, so I guess I want X7 embedded in some spin bundle. Uh, so we repeated this process for uh, nine brain structures. Okay, so this is going farther up. Um, so if we take P to M to be uh, an ON11 bundle, um, so I don't, uh, I think we were calling this two spin at some time, but there's not, I don't, not really a great name. Um, uh, but we have a, uh, a rational nine brain structure is just going to be a, a lifting here. So a trivialization of the third Pontryagin class. Uh, and a rational nine brain class, again, we're just going to define to be this class in the total space of our bundle such that it restricts to the transgression on each of the fibers. Uh, and so we'll call this class to be in a uh, spin nine brain class to be, to be a class in uh, degree 11 cohomology of the spin bundle underlying this, uh, such that it restricts to, uh, yeah, so, I guess I didn't write it over here. So we'll define this to be a, a class W, such that it restricts along the fibers to the transgression where we identified the transgression using an isomorphism. So, yeah, for each, if the farther up we go, there's always going to be this isomorphism on one of the degrees of cohomology between uh, your spin group and uh, um, your higher groups. Okay, so uh, we'll take P to be an ON11 bundle. Uh, we'll let Q be its underlying spin bundle. Uh, we have this isomorphism here. Um, so that's what made us lead, led us to, to define spin five, nine brain classes. Um, we'll have a bundle map between P and Q. And we'll do the same thing we did before. Uh, we'll study the, the you know, the, the Sayer spectral sequences of all of these different bundles, uh, and we'll start comparing. So again, um, you'll find that this map is surjective, so that every rational nine-brain structure is going to be in the an image of a spin nine-brain structure, or spin nine-brain class, sorry. Um, and two spin nine-brain classes, when they're identified under uh, mapping from the spin bundle, uh, yeah, from the nine brain bundle to the spin bundle, um, they're going to differ by uh, this sum here, where we have uh, a product of the string class with a degree eight cohomology class, and the five brain class with a degree four cohomology class. Um, yeah. Uh, so. An application of this, or again, what we did was we were looking around, um, and in the dual Green Schwartz anomaly cancellation, there's an action functional term that involves uh, some degree seven, uh, wedge degree four, and H7 can be interpreted as a rational, uh, well, I should say a rational five brain class. In, 
in the five brain action. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's not the whole thing. Ah. Yeah. It's I'm I'm only pointing out different pieces, right? Cherry picking to to uh, the things that 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 look like what we 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 have basically. Uh, so yeah, so, or just the observation, I mean, the, the observation basically is, I mean, it's, if you squint your eyes, this looks like the difference that we had before, right? So uh, we have uh, degree seven class here, degree four class, this corresponds to a five brain class. Um, so we want to interpret this as, well, it'll be the difference of two spin nine brain classes. Um, and in this case, we've just set well, psi 8 to be 0. Uh, another thing that we were thinking about was the, for the uh, action on a M theory action for a string manifold. Um, so we have uh, this integrand here. Um, and basically, we can break this up as G4 wedge G4 minus this I8 term. Um, and we have a class, this gives us a class Y8. Um, and we interpret this as being some product, so Y8, where C3 again is the string class. And so we just have this product of the string class and the pullback of Y8 is gonna be the spin nine brain classes. Um, so this is, I mean, just from the face of it that we were seeing that these looked very similar um, and, and the goal here is to, to develop this relation further. Uh, so I went very quickly. I don't know if I need to apologize because now we have time for, for coffee and all that good stuff. Um, but uh, I guess I'll conclude. Um, so. Uh, the, in summary, we were looking at the Whitehead Tower, um, and instead of looking at the normal Whitehead Tower, we did everything rationally. Um, and because of the, the nice properties of rational homotopy theory, um, we got these isomorphisms on the fibers, which allowed us to, to compare uh, class, uh, classes, cohomology classes that classified our structures on the total space to um, classes that would, that would would represent these things on the spin bundle. Um, and then we noticed that, well, these things ha are related possibly to uh, these different terms that tur turn up in these uh, action functionals. Um, so uh, I guess the, the future directions would be for this, well, uh, you, we looked at this rationally, now we want to go back maybe and see if, well, if this stuff actually holds in integrally. Um, obviously, we want to develop uh, the story with the action functionals more, uh, and then also look at the corresponding partition functions. All right, well, thank you. much more flip up in the regular case where uh, C3 equals H3 plus CSK. There you already have a closed form inside the C3. So uh, that, you can use that example because that's much more flip up. In M theory, you have to interpret it as well because there's a open classification involves two terms. You can take G4 and one of the other terms in C3. So it's um, not as flip up as the regular case. But Yeah, but, but which is the composite? 
it's a technology problem. So it's, it's mathematically unrealizable for the first time. But in the hydraulic theory, it's not mathematically unrealizable. It's literally mathematical. Thank you.